Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to, to be with you here today. Um, I would like to begin, firstly, on a, on a sombre note um, by recalling this week's horrific events in Boston and indeed the most recent events uh, unfolding uh, last night and to express my deepest condolences and indeed the condolences of our government to our colleagues from the United States present here today and to all of those affected. Boston is uh, often described as the most Irish city in the United States. It is home to generations of Irish emigrants and a place for which uh, the people of Ireland hold a, a really deep affection. And we stand with the people of this great city uh, at this very, very difficult time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to be uh, participating in, with such a distinguished uh, panel, Ambassador Kennard, uh, Mr. Donoghue, um, Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I think it's, it's appropriate, in fact, um, I've never before shared a, pa a panel with M Mr. O'Leary, but um, yesterday I spent eight hours delayed in Strasbourg Airport, um, <laughs> and never have I been so desperate. I have to, uh, firstly I should say it wasn't because of a Ryanair flight, it was a, it was a, a KLM flight, but uh, <laughs> never, have I, never have I been so desperate to get on a Ryanair flight. Um, but I'm pleased to say that business is booming because there were no seats left on the Ryanair flight, so uh, well done uh, for all your achievements. Um, Europe, and indeed also the United States, is working very hard to tackle um, the deep and the ongoing economic downturn. Ireland, as you know, uh, took up the presidency of the Council of the European Union on the 1st of January, and we have, have firmly placed uh, stability, growth and job creation at the core of all of our efforts. The Compact for Jobs and Growth, uh, which is the blueprint for economic recovery uh, that was agreed by EU heads of state and government last June, it identifies the single market and external trade as the two main drivers of growth. And our job as presidency is to try to facilitate this work and to ensure um, that it is translated into real policy, real legislation, measures, that when imp em implemented will actually help to create these desperately needed jobs. And although there is much to say about the untapped potential of the single and the digital single market particularly, I want to focus my remarks on the other driver for growth, which is of course external trade. We must recognize that as much as 90% of the future growth across the globe will be generated outside of Europe. Enhancing trade is one of the few ways to bolster much needed economic growth without drawing on severely constrained public finances. Advancing the external trade agenda therefore features very prominently on the Irish presidency programme and I think at this stage it's no secret that Ireland has uh, prioritised EU-US trade in particular. And this trade relationship is, is, is really important for us. It, it, it adds up, I suppose. In February, the European Council focused on the use of trade as an engine for growth and jobs. Substantial conclusions were agreed, spelling out a number of guidelines to help to ensure that the potential of trade as a source, source for growth and jobs is, in fact, realised. So while the EU remains committed to further development of the multilateral trading system, immediate priority will be given to developing its bilateral trade agenda. And you will be aware that the EU is currently negotiating trade issues with Canada, Japan, Singapore, India, China, Thailand and ASEAN, amongst others. So it's a pretty heavy agenda. Um, I don't want to overload you with, with statistics. Uh, many of you will know them better than anyone, but, um, but the EU and the US enjoy the most integrated economic relationship in the wo world. Our economies account for about half of the entire world GDP and for nearly a third of world trade flow. So, I mean, it is absolutely enormous. 
EU investment in the US is around uh, eight times the amount of EU investment in India and China put together. Total US investment in the EU is three times higher than that uh, in all of Asia. So in other words, the transatlantic relationship defines the shape of the entire global economy. Either the EU or the US um, is the largest trade and investment partner for almost all other countries in the global economy. And it's therefore not surprising that releasing the further untapped potential of the EU-US trade relationship is what would provide most benefit in terms of growth on jo and jobs on both sides of the Atlantic. Our trade relationship has enormous potential which is far from being fully exploited, unfortunately, at this point in time. Currently, 15 million jobs depend on EU-US trade directly. That is 15 million people who are either employed by European companies in the US or US companies in Europe. The bottom line is that both the EU and the US have a lot at stake and we can ill afford to ignore this unique and extraordinary opportunity and potential for growth. There are also long-term benefits to unleashing the full potential of transatlantic trade, our mutual competitiveness in the global economy. As more and more production flows from the US and the EU to emerging economies, we must face facts. In order to, to remain competitive in the global economy, Europe and the United States must innovate and do it pretty rapidly. So how do we do it? Long-term evidence shows that the flow of trade and investment helps to spread new ideas and innovation, new technologies and the best research, which of course then leads in turn to improvements in products and services. So by investing in the EU-US trade potential, we're not just releasing short to medium term economic and job opportunities, we're also ensure, ensuring the long-term sustainability of our economies competitiveness, which is equally as important. Given these enormous benefits, both in the medium and long term, I'm delighted that there is a real momentum to advance transatlantic trade. Internal procedures to move forward have been launched both in the US and in the EU in recent months. On February 7th, the EU gave the Irish presidency a very strong endorsement to move forward with, with a, a negotiating mandate. And on February 9th, President Obama uh, endorsed the launch of trade talks in his State of the Union address. And this is really remarkable. I mean, this is something that we have waited for uh, for decades. Um, and I, I think we can be very proud that it is beginning to happen uh, under the Irish presidency. Since that point, a draft negotiating mandate has been transmitted from the European Commission to the Council on March 12th. And on March 20th, the US administration formally notified Congress of its plan to negotiate a trade and investment agreement with the EU. And furthering EU-US trade, trade relationship formed the core of the informal trade ministerial, which took place in Dublin Castle, uh, as John said, over the last couple of days. So I'm hopeful that the Irish presidency will achieve our goal of securing a negotiating mandate by the June Foreign Affairs Council, clearing the way for the actual launching of negotiations. I'm keenly aware of the fact that there will be very difficult choices for both sides to make once talks get underway in earnest. And given the, lo the low average tariffs, the key, of course, to unlocking the potential of our trade relationship lies in tackling uh, non-tariff barriers, which often, I think, can be a lot more tricky. These consist mainly of, um, of customs procedures and of diverging regulatory systems, but also of other non-tariff bar bar barriers such as um, related to certain aspects of, um, of security and consumer protection. There will be difficult bridges to cross in the area of health and safety standards, public procurement, and of course, agriculture. But I'm convinced that if both sides take an open, uh, a reasonable and a flexible approach, we will be able to agree on a regulatory basis. Um, and uh, I think that uh, we will be able to ensure that we set the standard for global trade. 
an ambitious, comprehensive and a far, far reaching agreement on trade and investment between the EU and the US won't only trigger economic growth in our, in our respective economies, it will also send a strong signal of leadership to other economic powers. And I think that that has to be our common aim. And given the economic challenges that Ireland has faced since the onset of the global economic crisis, believe me, growth is very much at the centre of all of our national policies as well. Ireland, like perhaps no other EU country, knows what it's like to face and to overcome the effects of the global economic challenges. Um, as you are well aware, the government was elected at a time of very, very significant challenge for this country. So the task involved in fixing our economy, our banks and our international reputation was very considerable. But March 2011 signalled uh, what I believe is a new beginning for Ireland. Um, since taking office, uh, I think our government has shown leadership, a clear vision and a strategic economic plan for Ireland. These elements have combined to deliver an economy that has moved from instability and contraction to one which is defined now by stability and the beginnings of growth in our economy. I sincerely hope that in a couple of years' time we'll look back and we'll be able to say that Irish, European and, ec and American economic recovery was further enhanced and reinforced by a game-changing and ambitious transatlantic trade and investment partnership agreement. In the meantime, I believe we're firmly on track to achieve the Irish presidency goal, which is to secure a negotiating mandate by the end of our presidency. And I hope that we can count on your support for this very crucial step forward. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.